I'm Pop. And I am Flix. We are Pop Flix. Hey everyone, this is Flix joining you again. I thought I'd put a new video out there. 15 questions I have having seen Shazam. And be warned, there are spoilers. I hope you enjoy. First question. How did Savannah's father survive that crash? The movie doesn't really give much context to it outside the fact that he got paralyzed, but the crash took place in 1974 and out on a random road in upstate New York, they get in this horrendous crash to the point where the father's ejected from the front seat and lands feet away from the car. The son goes up to him and kind of tries to help him, but this is 1974. They don't have a cell phone to call someone with. That guy got launched from the car. The other car stopped and maybe he went and saved them, but it's never really well established. I'll be honest, as someone who went and saw this, I thought the father had died. When Savannah entered the boardroom later on and he was there, I thought that was just supposed to indicate that the son had grown to look like his father. But when they both ended up being there, I was a bit confused as to how he'd simply survived and only lost the use of his legs. Number two, if the sins needed the eye to escape, why did the wizard leave it right next to them? This question may be a little simpler than I'm letting it be, but they needed the eye to get out of there. It's sort of hinted that they're trapped within it, but they're also in the statues. Now, at the end of the movie, Billy puts the eye back on the pedestal and they go back to being in the statues. But if they're stuck there, if they can't get the eye, why even is the wizard looking for champions? If he dies and they escape, they're still stuck on the Rock of Eternity. They needed Savannah's help to get out. So there's no reason for the wizard to impart that power to someone else if just letting himself die and letting the sins free on the Rock of Eternity would keep him trapped there. Number three, how is Billy not either put in juvie or at least sentenced to community service after trapping cops? This happens early in the movie when we're first introduced to Billy. The way he's introduced is by tricking some cops into a pawn shop and then shutting the door behind them, including the gate. Now, I don't know what state you're from, but doing that, even as a kid, especially because he was knowingly doing that, is against the law. Now, if Billy had had some form of community service he had to serve out, or even was just put in jail for a day, you know, something to scare the kid, that made a lot more sense than they immediately cutting from him being picked up by the cops to being given to his next foster home. Number four. How does Savannah afford to fund the project at the beginning? This one's a little confusing for me out of, I understand he comes from money. We see that with his family owning a large business in Philadelphia. But Thaddeus, he's not liked by his family. His father like openly flips out at him at the beginning of the movie and his brother has just always been a dick to him. So why would you think he'd have any form of money at that point in time? I feel like especially given the he is held responsible for the accident that paralyzed his father, they had just shipped him off somewhere to a boarding school or something. Had not given him any money from the family and just had him having a low level job. But he's able to on his own fund this project that seems to be very well funded. They have all of these nifty gadgets and computers and interview at least 30 some odd people, I think, maybe 20 something. On that note, number five, if there's video evidence of the wizard bringing people to test, how can anyone say it was a mass hallucination? The premise of the wizard just bringing people to one place and then bringing them back was pretty terrifying in its own right for suddenly the kid's in the car and there's nobody driving it. But this happens to over 20 people and one of them even gets video evidence that they show, which is kind of what sparks what happens for most of the movie. But if they had that video evidence in the beginning, why would they ever believe it was a mass hallucination? They have physical evidence right there. And when you live in a universe that has Superman and Batman in it, you can't really go, well, that's impossible. Number six. Why did the scientist who hit the door disintegrate or incinerate, yet Savannah could open the door? When Savannah puts the seven letters, or the seven ruins, in seven columns, and creates the door to the Rock of Eternity, 
this lead scientist woman slaps the door and she disintegrates or incinerates. Kind of hard to tell which one. But that, to me, would kind of be kind of a... Raiders of the Lost Ark vibe, where you, this is something you're not supposed to be doing. Yet Savannah is still able to open the door. Just no problem, just turns the knob and walks right in. No disintegrating, no aging, not even a little bit. Number seven, how is Shazam shooting lightning into the sky responsible for the bus accident? This one's not really explained well in the movie, as Shazam's been shooting lightning into the sky for a very long time at this point, and none of it's ever come back down. It's not like he was throwing bolts that had a weight to it that were flying up and just circling back down. He was simply shooting lightning into the sky. And then when the lightning strikes the bus, he feels like he's responsible for it. And Freddy blames him for it. But it was a random strike of lightning. It could have been tied to his powers, but he didn't actively choose to do something like that. And he was not made aware, to our knowledge, that his shooting lightning in the sky would have any such effect. So that being the emotional divide between himself and Freddy as to what a hero is, heroes make mistakes. Look at Man of Steel. I mean, don't look too hard because it might burn your eyes, but Superman made mistakes. That's part of that universe is that their heroes make mistakes. Number eight, is Mary going to college in California? This seems like a plot point that was just thrown in to give Billy a reason to expose himself to Mary. He saves her from being run over by a plow because, one, that plow driver, he was not stopping. I, I see this in movies and it always gets me why they don't, why they don't stop. And as someone who drives often, how you're not watching how someone's walking, she was obviously not paying attention and neither was the driver. But she then gets saved and is crying about how she got accepted to a college she'd wanted to go to. But she wasn't sure she wanted to go because she had family there. Now, it's never given any resolution. There's no if she decided to stay or go. The ending we see of the movie, they're still all in high school. So we don't know what decision she's made. But they brought it into this movie as a pretty crucial plot because it's how she finds out who Billy is. It's kind of what drives the movie forward for a minute. Number nine. After killing his father and brother, what was Savannah's goal? Thaddeus goes in and murders the other Savannahs and the entire board of directors they have there. But then his next goal is only to kill Shazam or take his power. But after that, what's his plan to do? But after that, what's his plan? We don't see any real indication of having an end goal and just wanting to do whatever you want to do is kind of boring. So I feel like with the character, they would have had something that he should be doing or he would have had something he was going to be doing. But instead, it just seems like he's a puppet for the sins to just cause chaos. Number 10. When did Billy discover the eye was on the Rock of Eternity? This one throws me as... There's a lot of parts of this movie that... This one throws me as... There's a lot of parts in this movie where you just kind of feel like Billy's been watching the same movie you've been. Because he has almost all of the clues to figure out what's going on in situations he has not been given context to. A key one of this being when he sees that the eye is supposed to be on the Rock of Eternity. He gains the eye, but there's nowhere that he's seen it put before. By the time he meets the wizard Shazam, it's already been gone. So why did he know it was there? Did he just feel like that was a cool place to put it? He seemed to put it down with a lot of confidence. And he might have the wisdom of Solomon, but he never learned that in the first place. So you can't know something you never learned. Number 11. How did Freddy find out his battering hurt Savannah? This one really actually threw me off in the movie and is almost one of the key reasons I made this list. Freddy throws a battering and it catches Savannah in the back of the head. And he immediately turns around and Billy notices that he's cut. 
as all of the sins had left his body. But Freddy doesn't see that. And Freddy's very far away to have been able to see a small slash like that. Billy's the one that sees it and then stabs him with a batarang. And the batarang sticks in him because it's been put, like, put magic into it. Billy had put magic into it, so it stabbed into him. So, how did Freddy know? We never see it passed on from Billy to Freddy as knowledge. So, did Freddy just have x-ray vision and could see through Savannah's head to it? Freddy may have had powers well before we thought. Question 12. Why was Billy willing to give five people he barely knew powers? When Shazam gave the power to Freddy, it made some sense as he and Freddy had become close and he understood the struggles that Freddy was going through and had made them stronger together. But with Eugene, all we'd seen him do so far out of any action towards Billy was slap himself in the face with nunchucks. And with Mary, we'd only seen her struggling with her choice to go to college. Darla, we'd just seen her excessive talking and her inability to keep a secret. With Pedro, we hadn't even gotten any of that. He barely spoke. He honestly, I believe, had more lines in his Shazam form than he did as just his normal person form as Pedro. So Billy gave these powers to people about his age, some a little older, some a little younger, not knowing if they were sociopaths or not. He'd only lived in that house a few days, yet he gave them immeasurable power. Number 13. How did Shazam and Superman become friends? This is a bit of a ticky tacky one where at the end of the movie, for those of you who haven't seen it, and I don't know why you're watching this video if you haven't seen this movie, unless you don't care to see it. Early in the movie, Freddy had made a promise that Shazam was gonna have lunch with him at his school. And Freddy gets kind of left out on that as Billy was doing something else. But at the end of the movie, he joins him. And he said, I invited a friend. Freddy turns around and there's Superman. Now my question to this, is how did they become friends? We don't have much of a time jump between it. I mean, Mary's still there. It hasn't been a super long time. They're still going to school, evidently. So how did they meet? How did they become friends? This is something that could have been a cool story that you're just throwing away on a joke. Now, with the fact that the DCEU is kind of in the garbage with most of the people who are in it leaving, that's not necessarily a surprise that you throw away something that could be very grand on such a little joke. But it's still disappointing. Number 14. How does Freddy's Wonder Woman shirt have the God Killer? The first Wonder Woman took place during World War I. In that war, when Diana fought Ares, her sword, the God Killer, was destroyed. And yet in 2019, on Freddy's shirt, we see in the W's of the Wonder Woman, across the center, is the God Killer. This seems like it's just lazy, and put it in there to sell product, which is almost every shirt Freddy wears. But in the universe with Superman, Wonder Woman, and Aquaman, and Batman, it doesn't seem impossible that paraphernalia of those heroes would be sold. In fact, in Suicide Squad, we see one such shirt with Superman's logo on it with Remember on the back. But Wonder Woman's sword shouldn't be known to anyone, at least not how it's shaped and forged. Yet it still appears on Freddy's shirt. Number 15. If Batman was so worried about Superman and had video evidence of Shazam, why didn't he immediately visit him? We see in Justice League that Batman had visited everybody on the list that Waller gave him at the end of Suicide Squad that had had superpowers and been metahumans. Yet, he was trying to keep tabs on them beforehand. We don't see any evidence of this with Billy. Billy has been being recorded on put on YouTube multiple times with thousands and thousands, if not a million followers. Yet, Batman has never shown up to talk to him. Now, we know that Batman's ingenuous enough to find out where someone who's posting videos on YouTube is. And it's not like Freddy's being very secretive about the fact that he's the one recording it. At least not, he's not, at least he's not going through some proxy server that we know of. So, would it not stand a reason that one day Billy would just open his door and Batman would be standing right there? Now, given the relevance of what happened in this movie, I would be very surprised that it didn't happen during the premise of this movie. Because 
a lot of the things that Billy was doing were causing a lot of havoc and panic. He was instantly viewed as a hero for some reason, despite having not helped anyone at any point in time. But that still would be a good reason for Batman to visit someone to see if they're worthy of being in the Justice League or if they need to be stopped. Thank you for joining me today. If you guys have any thoughts or answers to any of the questions I presented today, please feel free to put them in the comments below. And if you want to subscribe, that'd be neat. I do intend to put more videos out like this in the relative future, and if so, if you liked them, hit that like button. Thank you guys, and have a good night.